A few days ago, we celebrated a graduation. The sacrament of confirmation is not like a graduation. A graduation, you finish your studies and you leave school and return to it only occasionally. I mean, we're always happy to have our graduates come back, our alumni come back. But generally you come back maybe to say hello to some one of the teachers or one of the classmates or maybe we're having maybe we'll have in a few years a reunion. Or maybe uh, as you get older, you'll come for our alumni events and things like that. Pope Francis said this about confirmation, that it's not the sacrament of goodbye. It's not like a graduation. You're not moving on in that way. It's definitely saying, uh, Pope Francis says it's not goodbye to the Lord or goodbye to the church, goodbye to the mass. Goodbye to the sacraments. Kind of like you finish everything and now you can go on your way. So I'm hoping that you're thinking of this sacrament of confirmation as the sacrament more like a hello rather than goodbye. Because it's a, a new beginning. It's not an end. It's more like a commencement than a, than a graduation. You're commencing something new. God is doing something new in you. You're being made into a full member of the church. Not part-time, full-time. And before you do that, I'll, before, we before you receive this sacrament, we'll ask you to renew your baptismal promises, your, renew your commitment that was made first most of you for your on your part made by your parents so you know this uh, spiritual life that we're on is, a, is, a, is an adventure and it's a grand adventure living as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ it takes sacrifice it takes effort even after the sacrament that you're about to receive, it's still going to require your determination, your willing sacrifice. Sure, you'll need to follow the rules of the road. You'll need to keep your eyes open. You'll need to make use your common sense and make good decisions. But inevitably, the going gets rough. Life gets tough. Decisions get hard. And that's when the Holy Spirit is there to help you in new ways with gifts that su supply the strength that you need. And sometimes you're going to recognize the Holy Spirit at work. You're gonna, it's going to be so obvious. You're going to be, wow, that was God right then. That kept me from this or that inspired me to that or that gave me this insight but most of the time the Holy Spirit is very subtle really almost imperceivable working in the background usually sending you signs through the people and the events of your life So you've been preparing for this for really for a couple of years. You've done all kinds of different things to get yourselves prepared. And so in the spirit of our bishop, I'm going to ask you, confirmandi, a few questions and give you a chance to let everybody witness uh, how much you've learned, how much you're ready. I remember Bishop Stop used to always say, Sponsors, is, is it okay if I question these candidates? Sponsors, is it, is it okay? Y'all think they're ready? Think they're, you think they're ready? I got to participate in a lot of sacraments with Bishop Stop. I always loved having him come and preach. I know a lot, lot of y'all remember him. 
So, all right, come from Monday. I'll start real simple. How many days in the week are there? <laughs> yes? Seven. Seven, all right. Anybody disagree with that? Are there seven days in the week? So then, how many sacraments are there? Sponsors, you can't help them. Yes. There's seven sacraments, that's right. Now, how many gifts of the Holy Spirit do we talk about? Now, y'all been learning the gifts of the Holy Spirit, right? So how many gifts of the Holy Spirit are there?
just to share with you this just this one leave with you kind of this talk from this uh, sponsor she was thinking about becoming a becoming a nun um, she was going to go to the monastery and uh, so she wasn't able to be at her at the, at the at the confirmation with her with her with her the person she was sponsoring so she wrote a very beautiful letter and she said this she said I can look back through the years and see how understanding and right judgment those are two gifts of the Holy Spirit understanding and right judgment were really important when I was in high school and in college because they helped me to discern Christian life and values at a time when I was surrounded by many anti-Christian attitudes. You know, our world is suffused with anti-Christian attitudes. And people that really try to live according to the gospel, according to the truth of Jesus Christ, get squished down. That's why we need fortitude and courage. We need these gifts of the Holy Spirit. Then she said, and it took a lot of fortitude for me to, she quit her work, she quit her job, she left her family, and to go live at this monastery, this abbey where she was. She says, at the same time, sometimes other, others can see the spirit working in us. She wrote to her, this is what she wrote to her young, young friend, that he might be surprised how many hidden Catholics and other Christians They'll heal me in the hostile world, in our hostile world. Once they sense Christ's presence in you through your words and actions. And really the advice that she gave him is something for all of us. He said, she said, so always make sure that your actions reflect who you are confirmed to be. Because you never know who will be inspired by the Holy Spirit's movements in your life. I think that's something very beautiful for us to remember and to understand. Dear young people, your parents have given you this great gift of a Catholic upbringing. They've shared their faith with you as best they can. You're to take what they're given and you're to let it grow. You should receive that gift with great gratitude that they've given to you. Do not waste the gift and do not ever take it for granted. Use these gifts of the Holy Spirit every day. Turning to God in prayer, especially when you need His strength the most. That sponsor's letter closes with a beautiful prayer that, that uh, quotes part of the Mass. She said, May the Holy Spirit come upon you like dewfall. How beautiful. May the Holy Spirit come upon you like dewfall. Silent and invisible but able to constantly flood your life with guidance in love. So today, students, God offers you so much. A dewfall, but perhaps a downpour. You could say a spiritual kickstart. A divine explosion. Gifts for every day and gifts for times of crisis and confusion. Each and every one of you are going to receive the same outpouring of the Holy Spirit. But how it's going to shape your life and change our world is up to you.